Even after I was diagnosed with melanoma, it was never an option to stop doing triathlons or especially training with the cycling portions when you're most exposed to the sun. Because if you're like me, training outside especially is when I feel the best. But at the same time, you also have to protect yourself and be smart, right? So by the end of this video, I'm gonna give you some details about basically your three options. Number one, wear sun protective clothing. Number two, slather on the sunblock. Or number three, grow a massive beard. Hey, it's Eric with UWJ Tri, bringing you a free video every week, typically based on something I've goofed up in my triathlon training, and I figure I'll pass it on to you so you don't have to uh, experience uh, all of those mistakes. Today, especially, talking about skin cancer uh, and how to best protect your skin while training outdoors. If you want to totally avoid sun damage, do all your training inside. And so when you hear that, if you say, great, Eric, I love the trainer and the treadmill. Yeah, right, said no one ever. Uh, in seriousness, that actually can be a bad thing because you need vitamin D uh, and having low D uh, can be a whole other problem. So you wanna do at least some of your training outside and really that's why I made this video is because I want you to train outside. I know you like training outside, I love training outside. So what you could do as far as relating it to indoor training is do some of your ride or your run outside and then perhaps finish it with a couple miles on the treadmill or a uh, last hour on the trainer. And so you're actually getting the best of, of both worlds, but not being out in the sun uh, for great lengths of time. The second thing you can do, which I'm sure you've probably heard before, is go either really early outside or late outside. And what specifically that means, right, is avoiding about 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., give or take. And so check your weather app um, and check the UV index because even though it is way hotter, at least here in Arizona, at 6 p.m. Uh, than it is at 9 or 10 a.m., you are actually more likely to get, get burned or get burned faster uh, at 10 a.m. in the morning than you are at 6 p.m. So check that UV index, see if it's low, uh, you know, moderate, high, or whatever, uh, and you can adjust it that way. But okay, on to something that's actually helpful to you while you're riding outside. A lot of companies have come up with some really great products as far as sun protective clothing uh, for training purposes. So some of them still use the SPF rating that you see on like a sunblock, SPF, SPF 30 or 50. But what they're trying to do is use the UPF system, uh, which is just specific to clothing. Uh, and they might rate it, uh, you know, as uh, if it's something that's S or UPF 50, it's 1 50th. Uh, of the blockage, so that's like 98% that the clothing is absorbing the sun's rays. So look for something, you know, with at least a UPF 30, 50, or SPF 30, 50, just like you would with a sunblock. So there's lots of different garments you, you can potentially wear, so here, let's take a look at a few. One of the products I've used goes around your neck. Um, it's made by Buff. Uh, traditionally, there's a lot of like, uh, for, for colder weather, they have lots of different products, but this one's actually a cool max for warmer weather, especially it's helpful if you've got a lot of stuff in the back of your jersey and your jersey, your collar's kind of low, and the jersey kind of goes down a bit with all that crap in the back when you're out riding. This can protect your neck. Um, it can, and one of the things I've done is I've come to you know a water stop gas station, drench this thing completely uh, with water, uh, you know, wring it out, and then put it back around your neck. And has not only is it protecting, but it provides a little bit of nice uh, of a cooling factor. This thing is extremely thin, so if you don't want to wear it, it folds up nicely. You can put it in your pocket. Next, we have some arm protectors. So you can easily fit in your back pocket. Uh, you can put them out on during a ride, uh, keep them on for the whole time. You can soak them uh, wet, provide some little bit of cooling. A variation of that, rather than having two separate sleeves, this is they're almost like wings uh, where it's one piece. And so your arm would actually go through here and here. And then there's this whole back part would cover your shoulders uh, and your back. So this is ideal if you're wearing like, uh, you know, a singlet or a tank top, um, as you can see in the, in the race here, uh, where I wore it, uh, the bike, uh, as well as the run can nicely go over, uh, your racing singlet. And then another option for the run, this doesn't work so well for the bike because there's no uh, large pockets in the back, but it's basically a long sleeve, uh, you know, t-shirt covering the body, um, really protecting the sun. You can see, uh, I wore it, uh, in the lava fields, uh, here, which worked pretty, pretty well. 
And moving on down the body, we've got leg sun protectors. And that's exactly what they are for like your arms. You just slip them on uh, over the foot. And uh, as you can see in the picture here, they go right up to uh, over, over the knee and will go underneath your, um, your shorts. One of the things that can help a little bit, especially if you don't want your whole leg uh, covered, is just socks uh, that come up uh, higher above the ankle. And so uh, you're minimizing the amount of uh, skin that's exposed, um, you know, which you'll have to put sunblock on or something, but, um, and that may not be uh, as uncomfortable for you. Uh, the same thing with wearing gloves. It's protecting the backs of your hands. And a couple more pieces of equipment that are more standard is obviously you're gonna be wearing a helmet uh, when you're cycling. And so perhaps leaving on the visor will give you that extra uh, you know, shade to your face. Um, as well as more importantly, even our sunglasses. And you know, there's all different kinds of styles, wear what's comfortable, but make sure it's 100% you know, uh, protection for your eyes from the sun. And one of the things, if they don't wrap completely around your eye, like these have a lot of exposure here. So what they actually come with, if you choose to wear them, is this piece here that you can insert. So uh, if there's any peripheral uh, you know, sun coming in, it's protecting your, your eye, um, which is really important. The last thing I'll say about clothing probably applies more to racing, but either way, if you're wearing a crazy thin kit uh, where the sun can actually burn you through it, then obviously you want to apply uh, sunblock uh, actually underneath your kit uh, before you put it on. But that's just something that it depends on what you're wearing and, and what your uh, you know, experience is. So speaking of sunblock, the most important thing to do, even if you have all the stuff that I just talked about on and you have no skin exposed whatsoever, you want to have an SPF uh, chapstick. Plus, who doesn't like a flavored chapstick? On to sunblocks. So you probably know a lot more about this, but quick review. There are UVA rays. Think of UVA A aging, cause the wrinkles and, and the early aging type symptoms. And then there's the UVB, which think B is in burn. That's what really gives you the, the sunburn that you notice right away. So you don't want either one. So make sure you get a sunblock that has broad spectrum protection. The two best active ingredients in your sunblock is zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. Now, lots of people don't like to use these because they're physical blockers. They typically don't rub in very well, uh, but the products are getting better. Uh, one example is one that I picked up uh, in Maui, at Xterra Maui, um, that those are the two main active ingredients and it rubs in pretty well and it worked great. And especially when you're out in the ocean like that, uh, there's a lot of issues in terms of the reef, and so this is also a reef safe product. Uh, I've also heard good things about a product uh, by Waxhead, where uh, it actually only has four ingredients total. And so if you want the more natural route, um, you should check that out. I can put uh, a link in the, in the comments below. One of the ingredients is getting a lot of bad press uh, is oxybenzone. And you know, I don't know if it's bad or not, so I just avoid it. But if you go to the store and start picking up sunblocks, oxybenzone is in a lot of products. So I want to feel like it's not bad for you. Um, but uh, if you have any hesitation at all, there are quite a few products uh, that don't have that. Now, I know some of you are going to disagree with me on this, but that's fine. Apply the sunblock every two hours-ish. And that depends on a lot of factors. And if you're doing it in a race and you swim first, it's more likely to come off than if you just apply it and then jump on them for a, a cycling training ride. Uh, people have different sweat rates, different products are slightly different, but try to apply it every two hours or so. And one of the things you can do is bring smaller one ounce uh, containers where you can apply it you know, a couple hours into a ride. Um, if you don't wanna use the lotion, there's some cool misting sprays. It's much easier to uh, do real quick when you stop um, while you're out there cycling. If you don't wanna carry sunblock because you're like, it's one more thing I got to fit into my back pockets of my jersey. You know, some of the things I've done is I put the sunblock on before I head out. And then two hours in, I'll put on the, uh, uh, the buff uh, neck piece and the arm sleeves. And then I ride for another hour or so um, and I don't get burned. You're not going to get cancer if you're protecting your, your skin. So uh, I really do uh, hope some of these things work. Leave a comment below. Tell me what's works be what has worked best for you. And if there's a product out there that you really think is fantastic, it would be really helpful to me as well as other, uh, you know, viewers who are looking to really protect their, their skin and, and to keep riding uh, for years to come. So hit the subscribe button now before you forget so you don't miss next week's video. And until then, I will see you 
on the trails.